Hello and welcome to this video which is all about Newton's second law. The second law is all about how objects accelerate and the practical that goes with it is one of the key practicals in the physics curriculum. It's also required in some form or other by the exam boards as one of the practicals that children are expected to have seen. The second law is all about how objects accelerate and the factors which affect that acceleration. There are two main factors. There is the force pulling the object and there is the mass of the object itself. Investigating these two things independently will give us two practicals to have a look at. The first thing that we will investigate is how the force pulling the object affects its acceleration. The second law tells us that the force and the acceleration should be proportional to each other so that doubling the force should double the acceleration. To test this relationship out, we'll accelerate our trolley with different forces, record the force and the acceleration of the trolley, and then plot a graph of acceleration against force. If indeed the two are proportional, then we should get a straight line through the origin for our graph. So let's have a quick look at the experimental setup. The experiment is best done on a ramp that can be tilted, but it can equally well be done on a standard laboratory bench. We need the trolley to be as free running as possible to reduce any problems of friction and a string attached to the trolley and passing over a pulley at the end with masses hanging on onto the string will accelerate the trolley as the masses fall. One of the first things we want to do is to try and remove the effects of friction from the experiment. If I give the cart a little push as it stands, it moves so far and then stops, so clearly there is some friction at play here. To compensate for this, we simply need to tip the ramp slightly. Just placing blocks, I find two Lego blocks under the end there, are just about the right size. But it's worth discussing with children how you will know exactly when we've got it tilted by the right amount. Actually, you don't need to be too critical about getting this absolutely spot on, but it's useful to discuss with children perhaps the application of Newton's first law to this situation. Because if we've properly compensated for friction, and there are no overall forces then acting on the trolley, then the first law tells us that it should move down the ramp at a uniform speed. So I can judge by I is quite sufficient that the trolley moves down there without accelerating and without slowing down. As I say, not absolutely critical, and it's a good way of discussing the first law with the children. The second thing to ensure is that the string pulling the trolley is parallel to the ramp. We want to make sure that the string isn't acting upwards because then part of the force would be tending to lift the trolley up rather than accelerating it down the ramp. Or conversely, trying to pull the trolley down. Again, an opportunity here to revise with children about components of forces. The other thing to realise, of course, is that the trolley will only be accelerating for as long as the masses are actually falling. So any measurements that we want to make have to be completed before the masses hit the floor. And one way to ensure that is just to make a mark on the ramp to show the point where the masses will actually hit. And I now know my sensors, light gates, whatever I'm going to use, have to be placed on this side of the line and therefore measurements will be made before the masses hit the floor. It's also quite likely that your trolley is going to end up moving quite fast. And so if you're doing this as a class practical, it's a good idea to make sure that each group have appointed somebody to catch the trolley towards the end of the ramp to save it crashing into the pulley and knocking the whole arrangement over. In some circumstances, you might like to consider using clamps to make sure everything is held down securely. 
The next thing to consider is how to measure the acceleration. There are many different ways of doing this, but there is a lot going on in this practical. There is a lot for children to take on board. We'd say that the cognitive load of the whole arrangement is quite complex. And so anything that we can do to reduce the cognitive load on pupils is going to help them to actually understand the physics. And therefore the advice would be that if you've got any system of light gates or data logging which will give you a direct reading of acceleration, then you really ought to use it. Because you will simply then measure the force and the acceleration direct with no intermediate calculations to get in the way of actually understanding the relationship between the two variables. If you can't measure the acceleration direct, but you do have some way of measuring the velocity, I'm going to be using one of these small light gates which measures the velocity direct for me, then it's still possible to get a measure of the acceleration quite easily. If you think about the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as, which is part of the curriculum, then we can arrange the experimental setup to make the maths as easy as possible. If, for example, we start with our trolley at rest, so u in that equation is equal to zero, and if we measure its velocity after it has gone half a metre, so the s in the equation is a half, then the whole equation reduces down to v squared equals a. That simply means we'll be able to take one reading of velocity from our little light gate here, square it, and that should give us the acceleration. If, however, you don't have any light gates or data logging equipment, it's still quite possible to do this experiment in a way that's easily accessible. All you'll need in that case is a stop clock. If the children time the trolley going from rest over half a metre, they can then work out the average velocity for the trolley going from zero to half a metre by dividing the distance of half a metre by the time that they've measured. That gives them the average velocity. Assuming that the trolley is accelerating uniformly, the velocity that they get actually at the end will be twice the average. So there's a little extra step to put in there, but once they've got the final velocity, once again squaring it would then give them the acceleration. One final thing that you can do to try and reduce the cognitive load on pupils is to think about the masses which are falling. It's likely that the masses are pre-stamped with the mass in grams. And in this particular experiment, we want the force that, that the trolley is being pulled with. So there is the added problem there of converting the mass in grams to their equivalent weight in newtons. One way you can reduce the load on that is to simply have the masses pre-labelled with the weight of them in newtons. OK, I think it's ready to set up for our first run. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is sometimes a two-person job. So Ellen has come along to help me set up. First thing that I need to do is to make my start line. So I'll just put a line across the ramp like that, and that would be my start line for each of the readings. We then said that we would accelerate the trolley over half a metre. So I'm going to mark that finish line on the ramp as well. And Eleanor will help to line that gate up correctly on the 50 centimetre mark. Thank you. And then, Eleanor, if you could put the mass hanger over the pulley for me. And the next thing we'll do is to make sure that the trolley is lined up and is not going to hit the gate. Perhaps we just move it That's over it. a little bit, yeah, like better. that. Okay. 
I've got a piece of card on the trolley which will interrupt the light sensors in the uh, in, in the light gate there and measure our velocity. I need to be certain that that will pass clearly, cleanly underneath there. So that looks fine. Okay, so remember that in this experiment we are changing the force and looking at how that affects the acceleration whilst we're keeping the mass constant. Now here's the thing, the mass that is being accelerated is not just the mass of the trolley but also the mass of the falling weights at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by putting five more of the weights onto the trolley. And then when I want to change the force, I will move one of these masses from the trolley to the stack at the end. That way I will be changing the force, but keeping the mass of the whole system the same. Let's get on and take our first reading. So, so far I've got 0.1 newtons on the hanger. Eleanor, can I ask you to reset the gate for me? Thank you. And here we go, ready with our first reading. Okay, and the reading we have there is 0.39 metres per second. Okay, I'd like to send the trolley back up please, Eleanor. Thank you. And for our second reading, if I then take one of those masses, and Eleanor will put that for us onto the stack, so that the force is now 0.2 newtons. Reset of the light gate, line up with the start line. And that's reading two, at 0.67 meters per second. Let's get on and take the rest of the readings. Okay, so there we are, we've completed the experiment. We've actually just done each run once. In school, you might like to think of having the children repeat each run two or three times and taking an average in order to improve the accuracy. I put the velocities in the results table and squared the velocities to get the acceleration. We've plotted the graph of acceleration against force and safe to say we've got a fairly decent straight line through the origin. So I think we've proved that force and acceleration are indeed proportional to each other, provided we keep the mass constant. OK, so we're now ready to start the second experiment. Just to recap, in this one we're going to keep the accelerating force constant. And we're going to look at the relationship between the mass of the trolley and the acceleration that is produced. So first of all, I need to find the mass that we will be accelerating. Remember, that not only includes the mass of the trolley, but the mass of the string and the falling masses as well. I've already checked that having half a newton falling on the end of the pulley will accelerate the trolley at a reasonable amount, even when it's fully loaded. But then again, not too fast. Let's measure them now. And that is giving me 311 grams. So, in this practical then, we will be changing the mass of the trolley and measuring its acceleration in the same way as before. This time, Newton's second law tells us that the acceleration will be inversely proportional to mass. And so, having got the readings, we'll then have to calculate one over the mass. And the graph that we will plot will be the acceleration against 1 over the mass. Right, so here we go. We're ready to take our first reading. And that's a velocity of 1.18 metres per second. OK, so now we'd better get on and take the rest of our readings. Anna, if you would reset the gate, thank you. And I'm going to add now 100 grams to the trolley.
OK, so there we are. We've completed our results. We've had to do a little bit more calculating this time because not only have we had to square our velocity to get the acceleration, but we've also had to do 1 divided by the mass. But the results are in the table and we plotted them up on the graph and once again, with an experimental error, we've got a reasonable straight line pretty close to the origin. Like last time, you could encourage your class to take repeat readings and average in order to get even better results. You may well find that different exam boards require certain different techniques to fit in with their own way of doing this practical. But we feel that it is important, first of all, to understand the physics and to do this experiment in the first instance in the way that is as simple as possible. You may indeed be able to find online suppliers of integrated instructions, which will again help children with a cognitive load for doing this practical. Thank you for watching and we hope you found it useful.